You know, a question I get asked all the friggin' time. Yo, Terry, what is the best Sony starter camera? What is the best beginner camera without spending a whole lot of money? And my answer every single time is the Sony ZV-E10. Let me tell you why in this video. What's up, y'all? Tight Sir Ted Warfield back in the building. I hope you are having a great day. Let's get right into the meat potatoes, yo. The Sony ZV-E10, in my opinion, is Sony's best beginner camera out there. In fact, I think it's one of the best beginner cameras out there, period on a budget now i'm going to talk about in this video the reasons i think this camera is great for beginners and also the things that are wrong with it because no camera is freaking perfect the other thing i want to say real quick a lot of you going to come in the comments like oh terry that doesn't have you know 10 bit 422 like my sony fx3 like i'm not freaking talking to you i'm talking to the beginner so please y'all Keep that in mind when thinking about this camera. We are targeting and talking to beginners who are trying to make the first camera purchase. Now, there's a thousand cameras out there, right, Terry? Why should I get the Sony ZV-E10? All right, let me go through the good stuff first because there's a lot, and I'm gonna talk about the bad stuff too, but I wanna start with the price. $699 for camera is actually not a lot of money. And this is one of Sony's budget offerings, right? It's actually called a vlog camera, although it's not really a vlog camera. I'll tell you why. But it's one of Sony's budget offerings for $699. Now, there is a kit lens version where it comes with a kit lens. This option is $799. Now, some of you may say like kit lenses are junk, which I typically agree, right? But if you're a beginner and you don't have a clue what lenses are, which one you should buy, go with the kit lens. It's only going to cost you extra hundred bucks. That way you can at least start making content right away. Now for $699, let's talk about what you get. So first of all, as you saw, I was able to swap lenses on here. And the reason that's freaking huge, because with being a starter camera or first camera, one thing you want to consider is what are you going to be doing with this camera maybe a year from now maybe you started out only wanting to make videos for youtube or whatever but then you evolved that you like yo i want to be a dope photographer too well with an interchangeable lens mount especially with sony because sony has a ton of lenses third party and native yo you can put on a different lens and grow with your camera so you can actually go with a photography based lens or a video based lens or you can just change the look up change the lens as your needs change and that's really good about this camera the next really good thing about this camera for 699 bucks is the sensor inside of it now this is one of Sony's crop sensor cameras, right? That means that this is a smaller sensor than what's in like the bigger Sony cameras, right? But that don't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing. The sensor in this camera is amazing. It takes amazing quality photos. Like some of the photos that come out of this camera, you would be like, yo, you took that with a way more expensive setup. 24.3 megapixels. It has amazing autofocus to go along with that, which we'll talk about that again in a second. But also with video, you can shoot 4K, 24 frames a second, 4K, 30 frames a second, 1080p, 60 frames a second, 1080p, 120 frames a second, all of those modes with full autofocus sound and all of that stuff. Now, the autofocus on here is really like class leading, right? It's got like face detection. It's got eye detection. It can follow animals. You can touch something on the screen and move your camera and the camera will still track whatever you touched. So the autofocus in here is literally freaking A1. So as you make videos, naturally you're gonna go down these rabbit holes on YouTube, but you're gonna start hearing about S-Log and Cine 2 and Cine 4. Well, this has picture profiles built into it, which is really good for people who wanna get into some pretty serious video content creation now the next thing i really love about this camera it is really freaking small when i put the kit lens back on here this is a really small package this can go in like a backpack a little fanny pack or anything like that now obviously if you put the bigger lenses on there you're not going to be able to do that the next thing i really love about this camera is that it has vlogging microphones right on top this is a three cardioid pattern microphone and basically terry what the hell does that mean okay so most beginners don't know about external audio and getting the microphone and all that stuff and most cameras around this price point have really crappy microphones built into them well this one is actually really good you can get some very usable audio out of this camera as soon as you get it before you even hook up a microphone or anything like that and that's a super clutch feature to go along with that it does have a microphone input jack so you can plug in an external microphone but even further, it has a headphone monitor and jack, which most cameras around this price point don't come with. So that's super huge. Moving around the camera, you see that it has a flippy screen on here. Now, one big disadvantage with the ZV-E10 is there's no eyepiece. You can't look through an electronic viewfinder like you can on a lot of Sony cameras. And that may be a positive or negative for some people. A lot of people, if you're beginning photographer, you usually want to, you know, do that. You can't do that with this camera. You do have to rely on the rear flippy display. And to be honest, it's not that great of a display. I mean, it works. Don't get me wrong. But... 
at least it flips around so you can see yourself when you want to create content and stuff like that because on old sony cameras you could not do that and i will tell you also that the menu system in this camera is pretty cumbersome it will take you a little while to get used to it and adjust to it but with all things with practice you can get good at it you can do photo video or slow and quick there's a switch right on top to go back and forth between all of those modes slow and quick is like this other type of video version where you can kind of pick what the camera films in camera and what it spits out you can also use that for time lapses so that's a really good feature it's a switch right on top this has some smart modes for beginners that came from the zv1 that's one of sony's other vlog cameras that are really good so a lot of people that get these new cameras and the first thing they want to do is how do i get the blurry background where well, there's a button for that it's called the background defocus mode and all it does is it opens up your aperture on the lens and all that stuff but it works right you also got a product showcase mode now i told y'all that this camera has bomb autofocus i autofocus tracking and all that but sometimes you don't want that sometimes for people that make content like you want to put this in front of the camera and had a camera focus on whatever's in front of it and not be looking for your face and stuff like that so boom product showcase mode the other thing you got is beauty features where it makes your skin all smooth i don't give a crap about that but that's just me now the battery life i'm gonna be honest i mean it's not the best it's one of sony's smaller batteries and what that means is the smaller the battery typically the lower the capacity so what does that mean in real world terms filming in 4k you should be able to get close to an hour per battery maybe like 45 minutes to an hour pictures wise uh probably like 400 shots before you need to replace and i'm gonna be honest i use aftermarket batteries you know people will tell you don't use aftermarket batteries because if they blow up it voids your warranty blah 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 let me tell y'all something i've been using aftermarket batteries for a decade never had one single solitary issue fortunately these batteries are not expensive but there are some really cheap options out there we can get a bunch of them and battery chargers for about the same price as you buy one native battery that's totally up to you i will leave links for both of them down there in the description and the last thing i forgot to tell y'all about is the live streaming feature all you have to do with this camera if you want to stream is plug up a freaking USB-C cable. You will be the only one in your Zoom call that's got the lit video because you're using the actual camera as a webcam. I forgot to throw that in there. That's one of my favorite features about this camera. So Terry, you got all this great stuff to say about this camera. What's wrong with the camera? Let's get on with the first problem. I just talked about it, the battery life. You gotta carry around batteries like dice in your pocket because the battery life is not that strong. The second big problem with this is the sensor in it. I said it was good, right? But then Terry, why are you saying that the sensor is the problem? Well. So Sony has kind of like an old chipset in here, right? And the sensor in here, although it can produce some really good stuff, is not the fastest sensor. And what that means is, without getting too technical, sometimes you might be filming something that's moving real fast, and you might be in 4K24, 4K30, and you might see that it kind of looks wavy, like a car or a train went across the frame, and you was just sitting there, and it looks like they turned into like a heap of jello moving across the screen. Well, that's called rolling shutter, and unfortunately, when you want to record in a high resolution and a high bit rate, but the processor isn't that strong, that's what happens. And that can cause a problem for people who want to film action, for people who want to move around and stuff like that, because you'll get kind of like a jello -y effect as the camera moves around. Now, obviously, there's a few ways you can avoid this. You could get like the Crane M3, which is an amazing little gimbal. I got a video coming on this soon. But the Crane M3 is a perfect complement for the ZV-E10. That will help smooth out some of the shakes and stuff like that, but it won't completely eliminate rolling shutter. While we're talking about that, we might as well talk about stabilization. This is another reason why I brought this gimbal up. So a lot of cameras have mechanical stabilization. So when you take the lens off, around the sensor, there's a little mechanism that kind of counteracts your movements right so you might move left the sensor will move right you go you go up the sensor goes down you get what i'm trying to say well this camera does not have that instead what it has is digital stabilization so the camera is doing all this stuff inside digitally right and that comes with a few caveats right the first thing is because it needs to stabilize the image digitally it needs to throw away a lot of that data on the outside of the frame so it needs to punch in closer which means there's a crop when you're using certain modes on the camera the next thing is because there's no mechanical stabilization digital stabilization just doesn't work all that well now you can get a lens that has steady shots so like the kit lens comes with steady shots so the lens itself has stabilization built into it now these two working together can produce some decent results but if you have a lens on here like this one right here that doesn't have stabilization then you have to rely on the camera's internal stabilization plus the crop now one of the good things is this camera does record gyro data so if you turn off stabilization in here it'll record all of those sensor movements onto your memory card and when you put it into the computer 
there's actually a software called Catalyst Browse that Sony gives you for free and it stabilizes. It's actually really good, but it is an extra step. Just know that. These two problems compounded with each other, right? Equals my biggest issue with the ZV-E10. Sony said that this was a vlogging camera. This is not a freaking vlogging camera. This camera excels on a tripod. It excels at photography. It excels on gimbals and things like that. When you have these two issues together and you try to vlog with this camera, first of all, it doesn't stabilize it that well. Second of all, as your hand flicks around a little bit, remember that rolling shutter we talked about where it causes little waves? Well, it gives you some real jello-like effects where you're vlogging with it. So in my opinion, if you are thinking about vlogging with this camera, you do at least want to get a small gimbal to at least alleviate some of the stabilization stuff, right? The rolling shutter is there. We can't get rid of it. But the gimbal will help with some of the stabilization. Those may be deal breakers to some people. Just something that you need to know, understand if you plan on getting this camera. All in all, for 699 freaking bucks, I feel like this is the perfect beginner camera in 22 and possibly going into... 2023 if you want one of these go ahead and grab one do not hesitate just be mindful of the problems i talked about as long as those things are not deal breakers to you you will be completely happy with this little camera anyways links below in the description i know i did a whole lot of talking my bad i had a whole lot of stuff to say i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here peace and chicken grease till next time i'm out of here peace